hole number three into the more medium sands above the clay layer. You want to push it out to about that size, about the size of a large coin. It's going to take a little while to get across the model. Since this model is a fairly coarse material, it may move fairly quickly uh, relative to the smaller simulator that you're used to when it's moving through the finer materials. So you can see the die moving. Right now we would see an impact on well number four, certainly if that were drawing water at this point. This one, one pack number seven. As these two come closer together, you'll see them continue to move. You can see the lighter blue traces already ahead of them, moving towards that stream. There's that red dye, as I said before, starting to move up, hitting the edge of the model, and starting to move back up towards the river. We can show that a little more strongly by injecting uh, number seven, push that blue dye out, and a little bit of red. Out of number eight. Number eight is placed there so it will actually impact that spring. I'm going to use green dye now that we've seen the general groundwater flow path and we've got a good trace going right there showing how it recharges the stream. These others will catch up there in a minute. I can add green to the underground storage tanks. And as I noted earlier, it's going to tend to move across the top of the aquifer, moving along like this. Much like all the other traces tend to move in their own laminar path until they hit some sort of impact such as the stream discharge or if they were pumping well in here they would change their traces slightly. I can also, since we don't have any red dye up, up in that area, I'll put some red dye through this large tank And of course it's above the aquifer in the, the zone here where there's no water. So it's got to creep through the soils down until it hits the water table. Simulating a leaking above ground storage tank. It will travel right above the green right there. Notice our traces. Go into that spring right there. This is our upper one, number seven. And then we have a nice long trace coming over from well number two. The red dye is over there starting to creep up along the edge there, recharging the river. So a beautiful example of groundwater flow paths here. Without any pumping wells, with recharge just simply being from a remote area over here on one side of the simulator. I'm going to turn on the recharges here and here just so you can see the impact of that change. I should note real quick before I turn those on, there are a couple spacers that we've created that, that just slip on the back of the simulator. Those go behind this precipitation tube and the reason is you're turning these valves is putting a little bit of pressure both on the piping and on the model. So those kind of hold it in place a little better. So grab a hold of the piping, turn the valve to open, about three quarters all you want. You'll start to see water forming right here as it recharges, right there. And notice immediately what starts to happen to the dye traces in those areas. Notice they're immediately going much deeper because you're introducing a recharge as if it were raining across this portions of the bottle. 
as this die trays where it normally would have continued across here, this recharge is now going to force it down into a path that goes a little bit deeper. This is going to become really critical when we start pumping well number seven in just a moment. Because before this die trace would have moved across, we couldn't have captured it with well number seven. It would not have seen an impact. But in those instances where you do have a recharge across the surface, which is normal, in a rain event you probably would cover a significant area, you would have a more downward migration of contaminants. And of course, there you get into discussions of those that float on top of the aquifer, those that sink to the bottom. But this is pretty much the same density, this dye, as water. And you can see exactly how that recharge is pushing that down. And this one right here, changing the flow paths. If I were to remove the liners temporarily, and actually I've got a little bit of water backing up in that sump, so I just have a little too much recharge coming in to this thing right here. We're going to go ahead and fill it with some red dye, and then I'll adjust my. Uh, my recharge there. And this one right here. And you can see the evaporation pond is leaking pretty good. My sump pond, because I have this valve open just a little too much. There it goes. By closing just a little bit, I can now see that that's draining into the aquifer. And so you can demonstrate your evaporation ponds, your sumps without liners, what happens. Of course, what I just showed, as you can show, is if the water table rises enough, it will indeed fill up, much like it would fill up these underground storage tanks. Uh, if the water table gets too high, if we've got too much recharge coming into this one, or too much coming into here, the water table is going to rise enough that you're going to get groundwater infiltration in, into storage tanks with holes in them. And again, we have some really nice traces here, going much deeper because of the recharge. If I were to turn that off again, we would see those dyes, I can already see them, as they approach the, the top of well number six, starting to move to, across the top of the aquifer, changing their flow paths again. And we, because we lowered the water table, the storage tanks, what water had built up in there a little bit, drained out again, and now you can see the green dyes moving across. The sump is now pretty well emptied, as is the evaporation pond. If you want to get that out of there, take a little bit of water on the back. Do your presentation, and just rinse it real quick. And then you can use the same pipette. What doesn't leak out, you can just discharge it in the back. Okay. So that way I'm ready to put my liners back in for a demonstration of if we have the same situation, but we have a liner in place. Of course we don't see the leak into the aquifer. And if I want to put it, I can put a little more dye just to make it a little more visible. Oops. Spill a little. It's always a good idea to have some paper towels handy for when you spill a little bit of water or dye. And we can see there that the liners, there's no more dye leaking out into the aquifer. That's residual that's from before. We can see the liners are holding the dye containment. Even if we open this recharge here,
we don't see any change in the units with the liners. Even if water were start to infiltrate back in, it would not affect what's in there. When we do turn those water back on, note that something interesting here. Again, this perched water table, look at number four and number three. They actually, you can see the water table get very high, very close to the surface. Probably some smaller impacts than some of the lower wells, uh, like seven and two, in the because they're um, semi-confined, and then of course the two aquifers are uh, uh, connected over here. Finally, I want to show you, I want to hook up the pumping well. And as I said, 